All right, so this is going to be video number two. I tried to record a video previously before this and it just didn't work out. So this is going to be the psychology talk for today and what I'm dealing with right now in my trading. Hopefully you guys learned something from this and what I plan on doing to combat this, um, you know, like this psychological barrier in my head right now. What am I going to do to defeat this? That's plan on what that's basically what I plan on talking about. So first, wh what am I dealing with in my trading? You know, like what am I dealing with? What is causing me trouble in my trading? And the main thing right now that is causing me trouble is closing my trades way too early. So we're going to go over some of these trades. Well, I'm going to go over all these trades for this month. I've only had three trades this whole month. So I'm going to go over each single one. What am I doing wrong? You know, like where can I improve upon it? I'm going to show you guys that right now. So if we go over my trades here, this is the first trade in Q October 4th. This is the first week we had one trade in the first week of October. Second week we had one trade. And then the third week we, uh, which was like two days ago or a day ago, we had a trade. So it's only really, I'm only trading again, one trade a week. That's why I'm risking so much. But um, here you can see we entered this trade. We had a three minute CB. We entered, we closed the position as soon as we entered. So this is the candle we entered off of. We closed it. same one. We closed like a, a partial, probably like 0.25, another 0.25. And then we had to move the stop loss below this low to hit the profit target to pass the account when in reality it was down here so if i simply held the trade here we would have probably passed the account boom trade one closing too early trade number two right here this is dow um same thing in q i was gonna say dow jones but it's in q october 10th we entered at a three minute um inversion for a value gap this is the whole inversion but I, I narrowed it down we entered at this candle right here you can see we opened up came back down lower guess what close the trade instead of instead of just letting it run letting it come back to break even and letting it move higher every everything in the bias was correct same thing with this one the bias was correct same thing with this one the bias was simply correct of course the market came back but it just was started chopping around okay gold this is my third trade for um the month what did we do wrong here we entered at this candle came back down we closed again so it's just like the previous trade we entered and then we closed again on the same candle and that's just something i'm dealing with right now everything else the bias was simply correct the market moved up and then it started to come back down so yeah three trades minimum i'm finding one trade per week three max some trades i just don't take throughout the week because i just don't have enough conviction but i've been tapering them and i'm starting to have a little bit more conviction whenever it comes to trading those and just building up my you know my tolerance to take them the main thing that i'm doing wrong here is simply closing the trade a little bit too early that's just one thing i'm noticing a lot more whenever i'm trading is i'm closing the trade way too early you know like as soon as i enter from the entry candle like a, it could be a three minute candle or, or mainly majority of the time it is a three minute candle i enter it and i simply close it when it comes back down you know my entry points right here it goes up a little bit and it comes right back down i close it you know and the main thing here that i'm dealing with is impatience and then of course not being able to accept the risk and the outcome that's just one of the things i'm simply dealing with is I'm not able to accept the risk first and foremost because, again, I'm risking a lot more. Some trades I'm risking 4%, some I'm risking like 3%. And you may be questioning, why don't you just lower the risk or why are you even risking so much in the first place? And the main reason why I'm doing that is because, I again, I backtested my system. I reviewed the trades, which I backtested, and that took me, you know, like from mid-October, that's when I started to do it, or maybe late October through mid-September. You know, I started to backtest or, uh, late October. And then early September, I was reviewing all those trades I back tested, and you know I've I've reviewed those trades a good amount of times, and I realized what which ones are high probability, which ones are low probability, which ones I want to take, which ones I don't want to take. And when it comes to live trading, this is like really my only first month of actually live trading when it comes to using this system. In order for me to combat this, and and the main reason why I'm risking four percent is because I have confidence in my system. You know, like before i was even trading the system or before i was even trading like this type of trading style or this model i was simply having no risk i was not risking at all anything if i'm being truly honest but then you know i got tired of being on the account for so long i started risking a lot and then i'll blow i blow it you know i'll be on phase two and i'll blow it and so that was one of the things i was dealing with was back then was not having a system or like a mechanical system right now it's pretty mechanical but um back then we just didn't have enough of a mechanical system we didn't have data we didn't have a strategy really to play upon we didn't have enough data on like back testing. We didn't really back test at all. You know, I just wasn't really able to identify which trades I should risk a lot more on. And that's another thing too. Every trade I take as of recently using the system is always A plus. No trade that I'm taking is going to be a low tier trade. Back then I was taking low tier trades. I was trying to identify B plus versus A plus setups. What makes this B plus? What makes this A plus? You know, now I'm only trading A plus setups. I'm not taking anything that is of less quality because I'm only trading A plus setups right now. Every trade I take is A+. Plus. That's the main reason why I'm risking 4%. I have confidence in my system whenever I'm trading. I backtested my system. I reviewed the trades. I have, you know, only really like this is my first month of actually reviewing. In order for me to combat this, I just really plan on 
recording, recording my trades whenever I'm live trading and just making a trade recap, you know, um, recording my live trading and then eventually going over the trade, having a little trade recap video um, as to why I even entered this trade, what was the build up to this trade. And then whenever it comes to live trading, reviewing that, reviewing that, going over where I could have done better, where, you know, I could have um, managed the position better, you know, and hopefully that's able to let me understand, you know, like, but like, just let me understand what I'm doing wrong whenever I'm live trading and going over my emotions, because whenever I'm journaling, the emotions, you know, like how my facial expression is, whatever, I'm, you know, how I'm looking, what am I doing whenever I'm live trading, I want to see that. So that's the main reason what I plan on doing is like having my face cam on my, my ring light on whenever I'm about to take a trade, recording it, you know, reviewing it, showing myself, showing the world, you know, what am I doing? You know, like, what can I improve upon? In reality, you know, like I, the main thing I'm really dealing with here is just patience, you know, like how, how can I be more patient holding the trade? How can I catch myself before I even close the trade? As soon as I enter, you know, like stop doing that, you know, like stop doing it. You're risking a lot. Of course, you have to accept the risk. You have to accept the outcome. And this is another thing. I'm too attached to the account. This is my only trading account that I have when it comes to like futures or I mean, when it comes to prop firms and I'm barely on phase one. I'm not even on phase two and I'm so attached to it, you know, like every time I'm about to lose or every time I enter a trade, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, if I lose, I'm going to lose 400, you know, like I'm going to lose $400, but it's not even 400. It's not even real money. It's demo. It's demo money, bro. And if I lose the account overall, I'm, I've only lost like $66. I've only paid, only paid $66 for this 10K account when in reality, it should be focusing more on the input. What input based, you know, am I doing? What am I doing? input wise, you know, like what is my type of mentality whenever I'm about to enter a trade? What type of um, what type of mindset do I have whenever I do enter a trade? How am I managing the position? You know, like where am I entering? Where am I exiting? What is my performance like? You know, what am I doing before? Um, what am I doing after? You know, what am I what is what is my emotions? How am I controlling the, the trade? How am I controlling myself whenever I'm in the trade? Just focusing on input based things that I can control. I can't control if the market is going to move up or down. I can't control if the market is going to chop around by my entry and then move. I just can't control certain things like that. I can't control if I close the trade, I can't control, I can't control all these things, you know, where if I close the trade or if I move my stop loss or if I move my take profit or if I close the trade too early or if I close it too late, you know, like there's certain things where I can control and just certain things where I cannot control. I can't control how much, you know, this is going to make me. I can't control that. That's the most beautiful part. Record yourself whenever you're live trading, guys. I feel like that's going to be able to level up your trading if you're dealing with emotional things like me, where it's like, you know, your trade management is not on point. Or maybe it's like before you even enter a trade, you know, like what is that build up to before you enter a trade? Are you doing what you're doing? You know, like, are you following your trading plan? Are you following your trading model? Are you sticking to your rules? Are you being emotional? Are you like entering emotionally, you know, in certain trades where you know you shouldn't be entering? You know, like, are you trading past your deadline? You know, like you're only supposed to be trading eight through 11. Are you trading past 11? You know, like there's certain things where you're going to have to be able to identify and stop yourself. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to be journaling live time. You know, it could be recording. It could be writing down on a pen and paper how you feel, what are you thinking, what are your thoughts. But for me personally, like whenever I journal, it's not working. You know, like I've been journaling my emotions after the fact is that, but it's just not working. It keeps repeating. And in order for me to do that, I know I have to change something. So what do I plan on changing is recording. If I record myself doing it, um, live trading and like making the mistake, I'm going to be able to identify what, what, what emotions I'm feeling. What am I doing wrong? And then after the fact, I'm going to be like, yo, you got to do something about this, you know, and even then if I'm recording myself and I'm showing it to you guys, I probably won't do it because I already know what not to do. So it's going to be able to just like rewire It's going to be able to rewire my brain into like not thinking that certain way because I already know what to do, but I just don't do it. You know, like just certain things where, you know, you're not supposed to do, but you don't, but you still do it. You know, like just simple as that. But if somebody's watching you, that's a different story. You know, you're not going to do it when you're alone. You may do the thing, but when somebody's do, when somebody's right behind you watching you the whole time, you may not do that thing. You may not act that way. You know, like it's just simple as that. If I'm recording myself live trading and I take the trade, and I'm uh, I'm saying I'm supposed to hold it, and like somebody's watching me, you know, I'm not gonna do what I'm not what I'm what I'm, what I'm not supposed to do. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. So as simple as that for me, that's all I plan on doing to combat this. And again, it's just like me being super emotional. You know, if you if I don't win this trade or if I lose, it's not the end of the world. You know, like I'm not going to die if I take this trade and I lose, you know, and I feel like that's the type of mentality I have. I, I become super emotional, super absorbed in the trade that if I lose is basically life or death. But it's not like that. It's not trading should not be like that. You should be detached from the outcome. As soon as you take the trade, you should be able to accept the outcome, whichever outcome 
you know you get and just move on with your day because every trade is unique um every marketing uh, experience is unique you know it's like live is real time and again what i was talking about earlier is not being so attached to the um the account i feel like if i want to scale up which I, I plan on doing for this rest of this year and next year, I want to reach, you know, a certain amount of funding. I want to reach six figures funding. I will reach six figures funding. You know, I got to have confidence. I got to have strength in my belief in my words. I, Roxy, SMT Roxy will reach six figures funding. I just don't know when. I don't know when. I can probably aim for it by the end of this year. I can probably aim for it by next year, Q2. I just don't know when, but I know I will be six figures funding. At the at the trajectory that i'm moving at right now is just moving up you know i'm doing really well but just certain instances where i just i know i'm lacking where i need to improve upon or else i won't reach that goal you know like if i'm not holding my trades i'm not going to reach that goal and i know i need to do something about it and i will do something about it you shouldn't be attached to them because they're not even real money they're not real money this is all demo money in my opinion um or not in my opinion they just tell you whenever you're um in the dashboard it's not even real money it's not real money you know the only money you're losing is the money you pay for the account to get the account that's all. It's not even real money. You you treating it like real money, like a real account is important, but not emotionally. You know, logically wise, of course, you want to be trading with a good risk management, have a good system, have, you know, your edge playing out. But when it comes to being emotional, thinking the account is yours, all that money is yours, is not. You disconnect from that. And I feel like that's something I'm having trouble with, which is like disconnecting from the money wise. I feel like I'm just way too attached to the money and I just need to stop being so attached to the money, you know, like that I'm about to make or this amount that I'm about to lose is not real money. You know, like it's not real money. The account it itself is not even real money. You know, trading is mainly just, you know, what type of trades you're taking. If you're following your system, your trading plan, that's all that matters. You know, the money is an outcome based um ideology you should be focused mainly on input like i was talking about earlier what type of trades are you taking are you following your system and you want to be you know mainly focusing on that you want to be just super absorbed in that you want to be absorbed in your input base what trades are you taking how are you managing the trade what made you even take this trade are you following your trading plan you know what type of trade could you have taken um if you didn't take this one why is this one better than the previous one you know like just focusing on your trades you know not focusing on the money you're not focusing on how much you're going to make or anything like that of course we all get into trading for money but at the end of the day if you really want to level up to a different level you're gonna have to disconnect from that join the world my live execution my trades going through the thought process that i'm having what emotions i'm feeling and hopefully i'm able to review those videos and i'm able to understand where i need to work upon like just simply leaving the 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 computer you know like walking away maybe turning off my pc or entering the trade turning off my pc leaving you know maybe something like that but um i really just want to watch the trade and actually watch myself and being able i want to stomach i want to be able to have a stomach to you know watch the trade i don't want to simply walk away close the charts this that because i feel like that just doesn't help you know like you're just like you're coping with the problem you're simply walking away when in reality i think you should be able to watch it should be able to um identify where you know in your mindset you're you're going wrong you know maybe being too emotional slap yourself but that's going to be pretty much really it for the psychology video of today you know i plan on making more of these probably outside in a different setup but as for right now you know it's probably going to continue being on my desktop so i get profitable get payouts buy a camera buy a laptop start you know going around um and just making videos around town i guess or in my car or something so so yeah that's pretty much really it catch you guys later peace